Good morning, Salem. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. We are blessed today to be here. Well, I am so blessed that I get to stand before you and deliver the word of God. But right now, we just want to take the time out to tell everybody, just relax. God is blessing each and every one of us. We are in his thoughts, we are in his hearts, and we are in his hands. This is Labor Day weekend, so I implore everyone that's going out to different events, please remain safe. Please wear your mask if you are close to others, and please remember to keep your social distancing. Uh, just because it's a holiday, let us not lose our mind. Forget that we want to stay healthy above each and everything else. Once again, this is also Communion Sunday. So with this Communion Sunday, I ask that you would get your elements prepared for we will bless them after the service. But have your communion elements ready so that we could pray over them after the sermon. What a day, what a day, what a day. And today also Deacon Stanley Smith is with us to offer up the Deacon's Prayer. He will come forward and offer up prayer for us. But I just want to ask the congregation to keep Cynthia Tate in prayer. She has experienced the loss of her father. Keep in prayer also Janet Barron, who has experienced the transition of her sister, Yvonne Harris. Keep in prayer Lawrence Stallworth, Wilhelmina Carter, Barbara Winfield, and all others who are sick and shut in. Salem Baptist Church has been active in the community. Yesterday, our food distribution ministry gave out boxes of food to many of those who are in need. Women of Salem, Monday night call. It has been canceled until next week. Women of Salem salon talk will happen Wednesday, September the 9th via Zoom. Zoom link will be sent by email. If you do not receive mail at this time from the Women of Salem, please send an email to women of Salem, PA at gmail.com. Once again, let's send an email to women of Salem, PA at gmail.com. You know, we are truly grateful for those of you who send in your offerings and tithes using the online app Tidely or by using the self-addressed prepaid postage envelope, we make it easy for you to send your tithes and offerings in. So if you would like to give, or if you are having a problem getting your offering in, please call the church. So they will help you get that in order. But I want you all to remember one thing, that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Being that we are without Dr. B right now, I'd just like to say, I like what Paul said about Jesus when he wrote the letter to the Philippians. I think it's somewhere in the second chapter, eighth verse. Paul said this about Jesus. He said, being found in the appearance of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above all names. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead. And he is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess 
what a privilege it is to go to God in prayer. Oh, most gracious and heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this new day, a day, Lord, that, that hasn't been seen. Father God, we thank you for looking over us last night as we slumber, to, to, as you continue to protect us. Lord God, we just, just praise you, Lord. Lord God, we just praise you for the fact that you gave us the breath of life. Lord, we want to take time to smell the roses, to look out upon your creation, Father, and just say thank you. Lord God, we know that there are those who are in the house of mourning. We know there are those who are struggling with whatever, whatever type of situation that's going on in their life. But God, we know that there is a God, and we know there is a God who loves us and who says in his word that he will never leave us nor forsake us. So, Father God, we're just holding to your word. We're trusting your word. God, we know that every good gift comes from the Father. So, Lord, we just want to just, just praise you, God. Just praise you for all that you continue to do in our lives. Through your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We would like to thank Deacon Stanley Smith for offering up that prayer. It's always in the name of Jesus that we pray, for he has done good things. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Even in times like these, when it seems like there's trouble on every front, we're confronted with overwhelming numbers of murders in the streets in Philadelphia. Uh, we're confronted with persecution. We're confronted with racial injustice, global epidemic, exclusivity, and deception at the very top of our government. Yet I will bless the at all times, because each morning I wake up, I get to look at a new day and know that the hand of God is still at work. I can count my blessings and know that God works for the good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purpose. I can hear and appreciate the music that I hear and know that up above my head, I hear music in the air. There must be a God somewhere. Church, keep the faith that in the darkest of times, we serve a God who sent light into the world. And that light is Jesus Christ, who came that no man, woman, boy, or girl should remain in darkness. So sometimes we have to turn off the radio. Sometimes we have to turn off the boob tube, put down our iPads, turn off our cell phones, and have a little talk with Jesus. You see, if you want to have a relationship with God, pick up your Bible. Pick up your Bibles and learn something about God. You cannot say that you have a personal relationship with God if you don't know anything about God. So take the time to learn something about God. God is only a prayer away. So let us not wait until somebody is sick or somebody is on their deathbed to call on God asking for favors. But let us also pray prayers of thanksgiving. God, thank you for watching over me as I slept. God, thank you for my daily bread. God, thank you for the roof over my head. God, thank you for my children. God, thank you for my grandchildren. Twice, three times, thank you for them grandchildren. We should not let the noise of social media, which is temporal, shut out God, which is eternal. The temporal should never overshadow that which is eternal. Because our hope, 
our gold and our prayer is to make it to the other side of the Jordan where we will spend eternity with our Father, which art in heaven. Let the church say amen. Salem, we have a word from God this morning. If we were to look at the letter written by Paul to the Philippians in the fourth chapter and the 19th verse, I'll give you a minute to get that in your Bibles. It's just one verse. It's Philippians, fourth chapter, and the 19th verse. If we were to look there, we would find these words. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Since that's so short, let me read that again. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Jesus Christ. Let us pray as we consider the topic. Your provision is packaged in your purpose. Your provision is packaged in your purpose. Let us pray. Oh, Father God, bless your children who are standing in the need of prayer. Rejoice with your children who have been filled with joy. And accept your children who have been faithful. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Your provision is packaged in your purpose. The one thing though that you must first have is a purpose. As so many people go through life trying to find their purpose. What is their purpose? As far too often, they get distracted by life itself. You see, there's a need to financially provide for your family. We get lost in jobs that pay the rent, but provide little for our purpose. But we can still find our purpose if we just listen to the call of the Holy Spirit. If we look to God and look at our given gifts, God-given gifts, what are we passionate what are we good at? And after we figure that out, then doubt sets in and we worry about how will we get it done? Where will the funds come from? Or how can I make time to fulfill my purpose? You see, in the business world, we're often given a task or a job to complete. Your provision is packaged in your purpose or your allowances or finances, or, or your time constraints, they're all budgeted in a neat little package so that you can do the job that you set out to do. You know up front that your provisions are packaged in your purpose. When you embark on the road to higher education or college, you, you, you weren't going anywhere until your provisions were packaged in your purpose, or simply put, your purpose was to go to college, but first you needed the provision of financial aid or wealthy parents who could get you where you wanted to go. Your provision had to be packaged in your purpose. But with God, it's not like that. With God, it's not like the business world where everything is drawn out in a neat little package. You see, with God, there are certain criteria that you have to meet even before your provisions can be packaged in your purpose. You have to have faith in God. You have to have faith in Jesus Christ. There's no other way around it because without faith, it's impossible to please God. 
You have to have faith in his son, Jesus Christ. But somebody ought to be saying amen about right now. You must believe before you see. You must believe that you, before you see, that God will provide your every need. Blessed is he who believes and has not yet seen. You must believe that God is Jehovah Jireh, God my provider. Your purpose has to be aligned with God's desire and with God's will. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Let, let us look at our scripture for today. It states, and my God will supply your every need according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Paul wrote this to the church at Philippi. Paul was extremely pleased with them for their gift in supporting his ministry. Paul was extremely pleased. He was spreading the gospel and they wanted to support him. Paul wrote, my God will. The church of Philippi showed that they had faith by putting their money where their mouth was and supported Paul's ministry. And, and second, they pleased God for their purpose was aligned with God's will to carry the word of God to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Paul knew. He didn't doubt. He knew that God would take care of you, that God will take care of his children, that God will take care of those who are faithful. With God, our provision is packaged in our purpose by faith. And by his grace, he will supply our every need. God sent Moses to tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. An impossible task, it seemed, for one like Moses. But we serve a God who can make a way out of no way. Moses' purpose was to set the captives free. And God's provision was packed in Moses' purpose. Even when the Israelites seemed trapped with their backs against the Red Sea, God had provided, making a way out of no way, splitting the Red Sea. Noah, Noah was a man of faith in God. Noah, Noah's provision was packaged in his purpose. He knew that God would provide his every need. Abraham, a Abraham had faith and obeyed God. He was told by God to go to a land that he had never seen. And God said that that land would be his. And he left for that country that he had never seen. It was faith that made Abraham obedient. And God made sure that Abraham's provision was packaged in his purpose. Today, many of our teachers are challenged with the task of teaching virtual lessons online as parents wrestle with keeping their children safe. This may be an uphill climb, but God has already made a way for our educators. Their provision is packaged in their purpose. I never thought that I'd be standing here before you. But God works for the good of those who love him, who's been called according to his purpose. God made it possible for me to retire from my job over six years ago so that I could work for him. I was worried I didn't have enough money to retire. But by grace, by the grace of God, I have been blessed. My provision, my provision was packaged in my purpose. But my purpose ultimately was God's purpose. Our scripture for today states, and my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Jesus Christ. According to his riches and glory in Jesus Christ. It all belongs to God. For the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. 
God created the heavens and the earth. And when Jesus went to a cross to be the perfect sacrifice for our sins, God certainly provided for his son. His provisions were packaged in his purpose. My brothers and sisters, God has blessed us all. God has blessed us all with various gifts. And God has blessed us all with a purpose. I implore that you would take time to listen to the Holy Spirit and find your purpose. Find your purpose by listening for the call of God. Know that God will not send you to do something that he has not already prepared you to do. God will not send you to fail. God will not send you to do a job halfway. But you will complete that task that God sent you to do. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and God's righteousness. And all other things will be added unto you. Don't worry about how God will make a way. Just have faith that he will. Just have faith that God will make a way. And sometimes he'll make a way out of no way. I'm sure there are many of you that can testify to that. For we serve a good God. Mighty things he has done. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. God will supply your every need and your provision will be packaged in your purpose. Let the people of God say amen. The spiritual doors of the church are always open. If you would like to accept Jesus Christ, all you have to do is open your heart and he will come in. He stands at the door and knock. And whoever opens the door, he will come in and sup with you and you with him. But if you would like to join Salem or if you would just like to join the body of Christ, just say this prayer with me. Let us bow our heads and go before the Lord. Repeat after me. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died for our sins and rose to sit at the right hand of God the Father, which art in heaven. Amen. If you took the time to say that prayer, and if you join this church, let them know that you have joined this church by calling up and let them know that you joined during the streaming service and they will take care of the rest. God bless you for your decision today and God bless each and every one listening out there today. Know that even though we're not in church, you are still in our hearts, in our minds, and in our souls. I know we miss each other. I miss hugging you guys and kissing you guys, talking about you guys. I love you all, for you all have shown me such great love. But the love that we have for God and the love that we have for one another is putting ourselves in a position that when God opens up that window to pour out a blessing, we're right where we need to be. That's how you put yourself in the position to be blessed. Do what God has told you to do. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds at this time for Holy Communion. I will give you an extra minute to those of you who are just getting your elements. Give you an extra minute while I also prepare mine.
Let us now prepare for the blessing of the elders. Father God, we humble ourselves and come before your throne of grace, seeking your presence to be with us. Father God, I know that you are always with us because you said you would never leave us nor forsake us, but I do implore that you will always be with us. I ask your presence here right now, Father, to bless these elements. Turn them from a carnal nature into a spiritual one so that we may honor you and do what Jesus said to remember him by the taking of these elements. Bless those of us of your people, Father God. And if there's anything between us and you, then remove that thing, Lord. Give us a clean heart, Lord, so we may serve thee. I ask these things in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and risen Savior, that all the saints of God who are able say amen, amen. And on the very night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it. Saying, this is my body which has been broken for you. Take and eat. Thank you, Lord. And in the same manner, he took the cup, saying, this is the New Testament in my blood, which has been shed for you. Take and drink. And he told us, do this in remembrance of me. And the rest I will set in order when I come. And they all left with a song in their hearts. My brothers and sisters, go in joy, go in peace, and go in love. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen, amen.